Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am your English teacher. Today we are going to read another lesson from your English course book. Let's check it out. Lesson number 16, The Golden Arrow. Ponder. Robin Hood is an outlaw. Is wanted by the sheriff of Nottingham. Design a wanted poster for Robin Hood. Do you know who Robin Hood is, students? You have to collect a picture and draw it here. You can design a poster. Did you know, in the Mahabharata, there are two archers, Karna and Iklabhya, who are considered greater than Arjuna. Do you think we should always do the right thing even if it hurts someone? Discuss. Now let's read the lesson. Robin Hood was the best archer in all the land. Even the king had heard of his wonderful marksmanship, and even though he knew him an outlaw, he had an admiring and almost kindly feeling for this bold outlaw who shot so marvelously well. But the greedy lords and judgemen who oppressed the people hated Robin Hood, and the sheriff of Nottingham hated him most of all and wish above all things to hang him on the gallows. Archer A person who shoots with bows and arrows. Marksmanship Skilled in shooting. I have it, said the sheriff of Nottingham at last, with a very sour look on his grim fist. I will catch him by craft. I will proclaim a great archery festival and get all the best archers in England to come here to shoot. I will offer for the prize an arrow of beaten gold that will be sure to fetch Robin Hood and his men here. And then I will catch them and hang them. Do you think the sheriff will succeed in his plan? Now Robin Hood and his men did come to the archery contest, but they did not come in the suits of Lincoln Green, that they wore as men of the forest. Its man dressed himself up to seemed somebody else. Some appeared as barefoot friars, some as traveling thinkers or tradesmen, some as beggars, some as rustic peasants. Robin Hood was the hardest to recognize of all. He went dressed from top to toe in tattered scarlet, the ruggedest beggar that had ever been seen in Nottingham. The sheriff was looking everywhere with cruel glances for Robin Hood, and very cross he was that he did not see Robin there. But Robin was there. Though the sheriff did not see him, there he stood in his beggar's garments, not ten feet away from the sheriff. Why do you think Robin Hood was dressed as a beggar? The targets were placed 80 yards from where the archers were to stand. There were a great number of archers to shoot and each was to have one shot. Then the ten who shot best were to shoot two arrows each and the three who shot best out of the ten were to shoot three arrows each. The one who came nearest to the center of the target was to get a prize. Craft, Trickery, Trickery, Golinkle Green, Bright green woolen cloths originally met at a place called Lincoln in England. Prayers, monks. 
The sheriff looked gloweringly at the tent. I was sure that Robin Hood would be among them. He said to the man at arms at his side, Could any of these tents be Robin Hood in disguise? No, answered the man at arms. Six of these I know well. They are the best archers in England. There is Gil O the Red Cave, Dickon Crookshank, Adam O'Dell, William O. Leslie, Hubert O. Clouds, and Swinton Hertford. Of the four besides, one is tall, one too short, and one not broad shouldered enough to be Robin Hood. There remains only this red beggar, and his hair and beard are much too dark to be Robin Hood. And besides, he is blind in one eye. Robin Hood is shaft in Sherwood Forest. Do you think Robin Hood will get caught? The ten met wonderful shots. Not one arrow fell to count within the circles that surrounded the center. But when the three shot, it was more wonderful still. Gil O, the red cap's first arrow struck only a finger's breadth from the center. And his second was nearer still. But the beggar's arrow struck in the very center. The price of the golden arrow belonged to the tattered beggar, but the sheriff's face was very sour as he gave it to him. He tried to induce him to enter his service, promising great salary. You are the best archer I have ever seen, he said. You suit even better than that coward Robin Hood who dared not show his face here today. Will you join my service? No, I will not, answered the scarlet clad stranger, and then the sheriff looked at him, gloweringly, with an angry look on one's face. Induce, convince. So hatefully that he knew it was well to get away, as he walked towards Sherwood Forest, the sheriff's words disturbed him. I cannot bear to have even my enemy think that I am a coward, he said to little John. I wish there was a way to tell the sheriff that it was Robin Hood that won his golden arrow. What do you think will happen next? And they found a way that evening, the sheriff sat at supper. Just then something came through the window and felt rattling among the dishes on the table. It was a blunted grey goose quill with a bit of writing tied to it. The sheriff unfolded the writing where it was mentioned that it was Robin Hood who had won the golden arrow. When the sheriff read it, even his wife thought best to slip away, for he was the most angry man in Nottingham. Prepare. Enact the story in the form of a play. Use props like bow and arrow, goose quill, and decide the lines each of the characters needs to say. You can change the ending and make Robin Hood more daring by showing him attempting to reveal his identity at the competition itself. Practice comprehension. Write D for true and F for false. The king admired Robin Hood's archery skill. That is true. Remaining, you have to try this. Let me read it out. The sheriff wanted to hang Robin Hood at the gallows. The sheriff was very happy to see the beggar win the contest. Everyone recognized Robin Hood as the beggar. Robin Hood had been called a coward. Answer these questions with reference to the context. I was sure that Robin Hood would be among them, he said to the man at arms at his side. Could any of these ten be Robin Hood in disguise? Who is the speaker? Why was he sure that Robin Hood would be there? What reply did he get? No, I will not, answered the scarlet clad stranger. Who is the stranger? To what is he saying no? Pick out a word from the sentence which means the same as crimson. 
answer these questions. What did the king admire about the outlaw Robin Hood? What did the sheriff of Nottingham wish the most? How did the sheriff plan to catch Robin Hood? Why was the sheriff sure that Robin Hood would come to the contest? How did Robin Hood and his men come dressed to the archery contest? Why was the man at arms certain that Robin Hood was not one of the ten in disguise? What do we learn about the sheriff from the adjectives used to describe his expression? List all the adjectives used. How did Robin Hood manage to tell the sheriff who actually won the contest? Perfect vocabulary. Archaic words, idioms. Many words used in the text are words that were used in the past. Outlaw. A person who has broken the law and who lives separately from the other parts of society because they want to escape legal punishment. Gallows. A wooden structure used especially in the past to hang criminals. Quilt. A pen made from a bird's feather used in the past. Can you find more such words? Which words would we now use for the words mentioned above? Use a dictionary if needed. An idiom is a form of expression that has a meaning different from the meaning of the individual words. For example, beat about the bush. Does not actually mean you beat the bush. It means not speaking directly about a topic. Here are some commonly used idioms and their meanings but not in the correct order. Choose the correct meaning from the list on the right. Idioms Number 1. To break the ice A bad egg To build castles in the air Couch potato To give the game away To beat around the boost We have already learned about bit around the bush. Let's find it out. Here in the meaning, column. To spoil a secret or surprise to a lazy person to make people relax with each other. To discuss a matter without coming to the point. Number six and number D. To beat around the bush means to discuss a matter without coming to the point. To break the ice To make people relax with each other. Remaining you can do it. Grammar Conjunctions coordinating correlative A conjunction is a word that grammatically connects two words, phrases, or clauses together. The most common examples are words like and and but. The seven coordinating conjunctions are for and nor but or yet and so. The best way to remember the seven coordinating conjunction is by using the acronym FANBOYS. F for FAND, A for AND, N for NOR, B for BUT, O for OR, Y for YET, S for SO. Functions of coordinating conjunctions SO for showing the consequence of something. For example, he was very angry, so he ate all the cake. But, for contrast, for example, I eat cake, but I never eat biscuits. I don't like them. For, for explaining why, for example, he is overweight. 
before he eats too many cakes and biscuits and the same similar or equal without contrast for example his favorite snacks are cakes and biscuits nor for two non contrasting grammatically negative items not plus not for example he doesn't eat cake nor does he eat biscuit or before an alternative for example would you like cake or biscuits with your coffee yet contrast despite something for example he is overweight and feels terrible yet he continues to eat lots of cakes and biscuits coordinating conjunctions can join two verbs for example the children ran and jump all over the playground two nouns for example would you like to buy a car or a flat two adjectives for example the all four the same grand yet mysterious two adverbs for example slowly but surely the turtle finished the race choose the best answer to complete each sentence would you rather have cheese or jam on your sandwich i did the first one for you let's see the second one his two favorite sports are football and tennis remaining you have to try yourself use the coordinating conjunction given below to combine the sentences what has been done for you i wanted to go for a movie with my friends my mom told me i could not i wanted to go for a movie with my friends but my mom told me i couldn't Mariam didn't finish her essay she did finish her maths homework Juhi bought her mom a sweater her mom loved it I'm going to the beach I worry about sunburn Samir ate all the biscuits He asks for more. You can take a cruise to Greece. You can travel to Iceland. Try this. It will be fun. Dushar didn't have enough money to buy a pizza. He bought a burger. She could not go to the show. She did not have enough money. Another type of conjunction is the correlative conjunction. These are words that are always used in pairs. These are both and not only but also either or neither nor whether or for example both Tia and Ananya are my daughters. He bought not only some books but also some pencils. We will go either to the park or to the library. Neither Tina nor Tanmay attended the annual day ceremony. I do not know whether I should go abroad or not. Combine the following pairs of sentences with appropriate correlative conjunctions. She wants to buy a pencil. She wants to buy a pen. The farmer bought the cows, the farmer bought the goats. The lion is dangerous. The tiger is dangerous. My brother has not packed the bag. My brother has not packed the lunch box. Suhani is my classmate. Shomia is my classmate. Let me try the first one for you. She wants to buy not only a pencil, 
but also a pant next the farmer not only bought the cows but the gods but also the gods remaining you can try it yourself performed writing write a paragraph on the archery test from robin hood's story describing it in details you can use the information given in the story along with your own imagination so here you can put some more ideas and thoughts using your own imagination try it will be fun listening parts you can skip it speaking never at any incident where you did something wrong in order to help someone this you can try in front of your brother or sister or someone in your family you have to narrate this incident in English try to speak in simple sentences here we have the three form of tenses past simple present simple future simple before now after let's check it out past simple i play subject plus past tense form of the verb present simple i play subject plus base form of verb future simple i will play subject plus will slash shall plus the best form of the verb past continuous subject plus was slash where plus ing form of the verb present continuous subject plus is slash aim slash are plus ing form of verb future continuous i will be playing subject plus will slash shall plus b plus ing base form of verb subject okay past perfect i had played subject plus had plus the past participle form of the verb present perfect i have played subject plus have slash has plus the past participle form of the verb future perfect i will have played subject plus will slash sell plus has slash have plus the past participle form of the verb you have to write this down as a chart using a blank paper or you can write this using a chart paper now students let me summarize the story for you the story the golden arrow is about the legendary hero robin hood robin hood was the best archer in an old land even though he was an outlaw the king of the land too had kindly feelings for him the king admired the talent of robin hood robin hood's archery skill his marksmanship was remarkable 
but the greedy lords and churchmen and the sheriff of Nottingham hated him. The sheriff wanted to catch Robin Hood and he devised a cunning plan for the saint. Knowing Robin Hood's skill in archery, the sheriff announced a great archery festival, a contest, and a golden arrow was to be given as a reward to the best archer. He hoped to catch Robin and his man, but they entered the contest in disguise. As a tattered scarlet, Robin was awarded the golden arrow to be given to the winner of the match. The sheriff could not recognize the beggar. who was in fact disguised by Robin Hood himself. The sheriff offered him a job and told him that he sought better than that coward Robin Hood. As he returned to Sherwood Forest, the sheriff's words disturbed Robin Hood. So he sent a note to the sheriff revealing the truth that it was Robin Hood himself who actually had won the golden arrow in the disguise of a beggar. The sheriff was sure that Robin Hood would be there in the contest because he was known as the best archer and he was sure to come for the price of the golden arrow. At least that was what the sheriff would believe. Nobody could recognize Robin Hood and thought that he was not there. While Robin Hood was in disguise, always present there, Robin Hood, disguised as a beggar, won the archery contest and was offered a job to join the sheriff's force, but he refused it. Even the king admired Robin Hood's archery skills, but the jealous sheriff wanted to catch Robin Hood and hang him. The sheriff therefore planned to hold an archery competition with the price of an arrow made of gold. The sheriff felt that Robin Hood was sure to come as he was a great archer and would definitely win the prize. Robin Hood went dressed as a beggar in disguise and other men went as freyers, traveling tinkers and beggars. The man at arms knew six of them and none of the remaining four match Robin Hood in height or physical appearance, the sheriff appears to be an ill-natured man as shown by the adjectives like grim face, cross, angry, etc. Robin Hood shot a knot through the window of sheriff's house at last, telling him that it was he himself who won the golden arrow.